I've got these USB web cameras everywhere. I use USB webcams for pretty much everything. I do all my video recording with webcams. I have a few setting around the house at different computers so I can do video calls. And I use them on my Raspberry Pis with OctoPrint for all my time lapse footage. But sometimes USB cams can be a little tricky to use. So today I thought I'd show you how I set mine up in Windows and I'll go over some options that you have on command line Linux to help you use them while you're doing your OctoPrint recordings. Now for the OctoPrint portion of this episode, I am assuming that you have OctoPrint installed on a Raspberry Pi and it's working and you have at least one cam or multiple cams set up. And if you need to know how to do any of that, the links to those videos will be in the description. So let's start with the Windows portion. This is the best program that I've ever found for controlling multiple webcams on Windows. It's called Cam Control. I will leave a link to it in the description. It allows you to adjust all the attributes of your webcam manually, so they don't automatically do it. Sometimes, depending on what you're recording, auto exposure and focus can really be a pain. So it lists all the cameras that you have plugged into your computer up here. I do use three pretty much on a regular basis for recording videos. And it doesn't name them uniquely, so you have to kind of guess which one is which camera. But if you don't swap USB ports out very often, you can pretty much remember which cam is what. You do have to adjust these settings every time you reboot or you introduce something new to the USB bus, but it's still a lot better than the automatic settings. For example, I have a ceiling cam, a main cam, and a table cam. So here's my current table cam view up here in the corner. First thing we have to do is decide which camera that is. Just because I know, I'm pretty sure table cam is cam 1. The easiest way to find out which camera is which is just to adjust the focus. And you can see the focus is adjusting. That way we know which camera is right. So let's just get that Benchy in focus. That looks pretty good. And then I have standard settings that I like to set based on the lighting I have in the room. I leave brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness all in the center. That's a value of 128. You can see the values down here. Those will be important in a little bit when we do the Linux portion. White balance, I like to set it around 4013. Again, that's just based on the light that I have in the room. Backlight compensation is either on or off. I like to turn it off. Gain, I set to zero. Zoom, that depends on what we're working on. You can zoom in pretty tight on a webcam, but the quality does degrade the more you zoom, of course. Exposure time, I usually set mine to 0 0.0133. Again, that's just based on the lighting that I have. If this box over here has a check in it, that means that the camera is doing it automatically. So your white balance, your focus, and your exposure time will be done on auto. So this makes it a lot nicer to be able to turn that off and do it manually as needed. You can turn your LED on your cam on and off. You can have a preview inside this window if you'd like. You can reset back to the default values and you can use your power scheme. So every time I start to record, I just set all my camera values where I want them initially. I set them all the same. So here's my defaults. Now I'll move to camera two, which is the ceiling cam. And I'll just click on all the buttons to make sure this camera is set the same way. You'll see the camera change a bit. And then I'll do the same thing for my main camera. And that way I know I'm good to go and ready to start recording with the default values. Everything should be looking good. And when you come down here to save these settings, it actually builds it into an init file. That file will exist in the same location as your camera control program, but you can also take a look at it. Let's open it up with Notepad++. And here's what that info looks like. So all the values that we set and then we hit save, you should be able to just come back into camera control and they'll be set up like that. You just have to run through all the dials and click them once to get them back to where they belong. And it's also important to mention that I don't use Logitech drivers. These cameras are all C920s. So let's head into control panel and we'll take a look at device manager. And if you expand imaging devices, you can see it lists them as Logitech HD Pro Webcam C920. That's the default Windows driver that it's going to use for that camera. I've had no luck with the genuine Logitech driver. It does a lot of funny things inside of OBS, so I recommend sticking with the Windows default. So that's the Windows side of things. And it's important to mention that you're not going to be able to do this with every web camera. You can't control all the attributes individually. But on the higher end ones, like the 900 series, it should work just fine. And if anyone out there has any suggestions on software that does this better, please leave them in the comments. Now let's look at the Linux side of things. So we'll jump into OctoPrint first. I have my OctoPrint instance set up with Multicam, so you can head over to the Control tab. And I've got my Black Benchy Cam, and I've got my Yellow Benchy Cam. 
If you need to know about multicam, there's a video for that. I'll leave it in the description. So let's start with our black benchy cam. The settings look pretty good, but you'll notice if something enters the field, it's going to try to auto-focus. And that gets pretty annoying when you're trying to monitor prints or do time-lapse footage. So I would much prefer to set them myself. So let's log into our Raspberry Pi SSH with PuTTY. You can use octopi.local or your IP address. We'll shrink our Octoprint browser over here so we can still see the webcam. Well, let's log in as Pi. Password, Raspberry. So again, Multicam is set up and I've named these cameras accordingly. You can take a look at your devices with an LS slash dev. And we have a video black and a video yellow. And those are set up in a USB rule. And just as a refresher, if you want to see what those attributes look like, we can change directory into slash etc slash udev slash rules dot d. And this 99 USB rules is the file that I created. So let's take a look at that. And you can see the attributes for my webcams. So basically I'm taking the video zero and one device and renaming it to something that makes sense. I'm using the vendor ID, the product ID, and the serial number of each cam to tell them apart. So when they're set up like this, you can refer to the devices in the slash dev directory. So slash dev slash video black or video yellow. So to control a USB cam, the easiest way is to use video for Linux control. If you do a v4l2-ctl dash dash all, that will show you all the information for your USB cams, as well as all the attributes that you can adjust on this camera right here. This is the best way to tell if your camera is going to support these types of settings. So all these attributes are the same ones that we were looking at in that Windows program. But now we can control them via command line in Linux. For example, let's say we wanted to adjust the brightness for our black benchy cam. You can use that same command, v4l2-ctl, and then you need to list the device that you want to use. We want to use our black benchy cam, so we'll do dash d forward slash dev forward slash video black. And then we want to do dash C, lowercase c, for control set. And then we'll do brightness equals 255. Now the default value for brightness is right in the center at 128. Here's the min and the max listed up here in the all command. Well, let's just do 255 just for a test. Hit enter. You can see our camera up here got really bright. And we can set that back to 128. Now what about things like white balance and focus, things that are done automatically? Well first you have to tell the camera to stop doing it automatically, then you can adjust its value. So focus for example, focus auto, its default value is 1. That means by default focus auto is always on. So let's turn the auto focus off, again same command, v4l2, dash ctl, dash d for device, dash lowercase c, focus auto, equals zero. That'll make it stop auto-focusing. And you can see if you put your hand in the field, it's no longer focusing. And after the auto shut off, we can adjust the focus. So we'll just bring that command back up. Instead of focus auto, we'll do focus absolute. And just for the test, let's do 250. Super out of focus. Let's jump back to zero. Super out of focus. But 50 is pretty good. Same thing for exposure, but its default is zero. So to turn it off, you need to set it to one. So the same command, we'll do exposure, underscore auto, and we'll do equals, and we'll set that to one. Now you can adjust the exposure absolute setting. Bring that back up, exposure absolute, equals, I like 133. Again, I'm using the values that I use in that Windows program. So we'll set it to 133, and the exposure does drop quite a bit. And you can adjust pretty much all these settings that way. Of course, my camera doesn't have pan and tilt, but that's going to be pretty obvious. So you can adjust those settings manually on command line for each camera, and that's all fine and good. But what if you want to make those adjustments every time the Pi boots up, so you don't have to do it manually time after time? Well, we need a script for that. Let's make one. So I'm going to put the script file in etc defaults just so I know where it is. So let's change directory into etc defaults, forward slash default. You can take a look in there if you want to. 
You can see all the attributes for those files if you do an ls-als. That gives you just a little bit more information. And let's make our new script file, sudo nano, and let's call it camset.sh. And the first line that we need for a bash shell script, we're going to do pound, exclamation point, forward slash bin, forward slash bash. That just makes sure we're using the bash shell. And then the next line, I'm going to put some output to the syslog. You can do that with a logger command. So we'll do logger. And let's just put a message out there that says we're starting this script. So starting camset script. That just gives us something to find in the log so we know that it ran. Next, let's sleep for 60 seconds. So sleep 60. I want it to sleep for 60 seconds because I want to make sure that it runs after everything else does. I want to make sure that webcam D and all that stuff is complete before this script runs. And where we're going to put this file to kick it off, that should happen. So sleep 60 should be good enough. Then we can just start entering our commands like we did on command line before, one after another to set all the options for our cameras. So just like before, let's do v4l2-ctl and then we'll do dash D for device, and then our device, forward slash dev, forward slash video black. Then we'll do dash lowercase c, and let's just start with brightness. Brightness equals 128, because that's the setting in the middle that I think looks best. And you can just add these commands one after another to set all the settings for your camera. Remember, if it's an automatic setting like white balance or focus, you have to turn that auto setting off before you make your setting. So you don't need to see me type in all these, so let's do a little bit of movie magic. And here's all the settings that I'm going to use for the black camera. Now I want to do the same exact thing for the yellow camera. So I'll just copy all of this, and then I'll change black to yellow. More movie magic. And there's all the commands for the yellow camera. Now after the script is completed, let's go ahead and throw one more message in the log to tell us so. So we'll do logger, and let's say cam set script complete. And that's all we should need. So let's do control X, Y, and enter to save. And now we need to make sure that that runs at the start of the script. So we're going to put it in rc.local. So let's do sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash rc.local. And then let's head down to the very bottom of the script and we're just going to add a line right before the exit and we'll say forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash cam set dot sh so that's going to run it on reboot so we can save that control x y enter to save and then one more command we need to set the permissions on that cam set script so that it can run so we'll do sudo chmod we'll set it to 775 to allow it to execute and since we're still in the etc default directory, we can just put in camset.sh and hit enter. And then if you do that ls-als command again, you can see our camset script. The permissions have been updated. You can see those over here. So it will allow it to execute. So now let's set up a test to make sure it works. So let's just change one of the attributes and then we'll reboot and make sure that it got changed by that script. So let's try white balance. First thing we'll do is we'll turn the auto to off. So v4l2-ctl. So we've still got our black benchy cam over here. So we'll do dash d forward slash dev forward slash video black. Then we'll do dash lowercase c. And we need this white balance temperature auto right here. So let's copy and paste it. And we'll do equal zero to turn the auto off. Now let's bring that command back up and let's set the temperature to equal 6,000. And you can take a look at what those settings are. Instead of doing a lowercase c, do an uppercase c without the value on the end. It's set to 6,000. So now let's reboot. We'll take a look at the log and we'll make sure that the camera gets set correctly. So sudo reboot now. The Pi is rebooted. Let's log back in. Let's take a look at the messages log to see if our script ran. Forward slash var, forward slash log, forward slash messages. 
You can see our start cam script right there. And you can see our cam script completed right here. And if we take a look at that white balance setting, it should now be 4013 because that's where we set it in our script. And it's 4013 and the camera over here on our Benchy looks correct. We're all done. And there you go. There's a whole lot of information about webcam goodness. Now, of course, not everyone is going to use a lot of webcams like I do, but if you do need this information, it can be somewhat challenging to find and understand. So hopefully I made it a little easier. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.